I have two special guests who are being currently censored by Twitter, by Elon Musk and X, and I'm never going to call it X. I'm going to call it Twitter. <laughs> Here's how much I'm not calling it X. I say Malcolm Twitter now. That's right. Instead of Malcolm That's X. how much we're not saying it. <laughs> Here's how much I don't respect that transition. <laughs> so uh, our first guest who's being uh, censored and uh, demonetized and what have you. Finally. Uh, finally. On Twitter is Jake Shields. He's an oh. American mixed martial artist and a submission grappler who won the UFC Strike Force Middleweight Championship in 2009. He's widely credited as a pioneer in the world of mixed martial arts and Brazilian jiu jitsu. Shields was recently demonetized on Twitter on Twitter over comments critical of the Israeli assault on Gaza. Also joining us is Jackson Hinkle, the hair, the founder of the independent media outlet, the dive and host of the dive with Jackson, the hair Hinkle. His program has been permanently banned from YouTube for alleged Ukraine misinformation, but you know, it's Ukraine information. What's Ukraine? I can't even remember that. I can't even remember that word so long ago. And his Twitter account recently surpassed, Two million follower marks. So they kicked him off YouTube, and in three weeks, he gained over like 1.7 million followers on Twitter. And so uh, here is uh, Jackson and uh, Jake. Thanks for coming on the show. Jake, so I meant finally Jackson got kicked off, not you. Yeah, that's what oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jake first. So let me just play this quick video of, of Jackson, and then we'll come and get your comments. So look, uh, we're under attack. We are under attack, but what else is new? Nothing. We've been under attack for a while for telling the truth about Ukraine and Russia and China. Now we're under attack for telling the truth about Israel, okay? Apparently there was a meeting at X headquarters, or Twitter, <laughs> formerly Twitter headquarters, uh, just the other day. <laughs> and sick. this meeting was attended by X executives, not including Elon Musk. And at this meeting, there were two names that were thrown into the conversation about how do we limit the reach of these accounts on our platform? Should we just ban them? So ex executives are meeting in San Francisco um, and they are <laughs> having a discussion, I guess, about whether or not they're going to ban yours truly, along with Jake Shields, who is an MMA uh, veteran and a five time champion about whether or not they're going to ban us from X. Think about this. Think about this, folks. 65% of Americans support a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas or Gaza. Okay, 65%. That includes a majority of Republicans, a majority of independents, a majority, obviously, of Democrats, which takes the largest uh, you know, share of the vote there. 65% of Americans across the board, all, all political parties, say they want a ceasefire. You can't get 65% of Americans to agree, agree on anything. You can't get 65% of Americans to tell you it's sunny outside if the sky isn't clouded and it's not raining. You know, you can't get 65% of Americans to agree on anything, but they agree on this. And keep in mind, while this is happening, we have zero votes for a ceasefire in the Senate, zero votes for a ceasefire coming from the White House, Joe Biden, of course. And we only have a few votes calling for a ceasefire in the House of Representatives, okay? That's where we're at in American politics. 65% of Americans support something, but because we don't live in a democracy, because we, we live in this world where our government is captured by the military, military industrial complex and by lobbyists that apparently don't have to register as foreign agents if they're working for Israel, but if they're working for Russia, they do. Then we get zero votes for a ceasefire. Think about that. So that's that was a great video clip. Let me bring in uh, Jake. Jake, now what the hell are you doing on Twitter that uh, made you the focus of this meeting of Twitter executives without Elon Musk in San Francisco? And then they did demonetize your account. What What are you doing? Yeah, it makes no sense to me. I just, uh, I'm just a fighter that sometimes tweets my thoughts. And I think, you know, recently my thoughts have not been, uh, actually, I've never been pro war. I wasn't uh, pro Ukrainian war, pro Iraqi war, pro any of these wars, but I've been a. Oh, he's your third strike. Or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> three, stri three strikes him out. But for some reason, for uh, opposing this one, they're saying I'm an anti Semitic uh, terrorist sympathizer. It's a little less strange. Sounds and, like uh, it to me. So, yeah, I just think our political class, I think, is, you know, the, our, our political commentators are also pro Israel. I think my count in Jackson's, we blew up because we're speaking our minds when our political class isn't. 
I think it really, uh, they don't like it, especially my account is mostly, for whatever reason, I mostly have MAGA people following me. And I think they really don't want the MAGA people seeing a uh, anti Israel uh, view. Oh, that's how you got on the list. Oh, that's think so. what it, oh. Yeah, Jake, they can't have that, man, because, you know, they're going to need those people to send their kids to fight for Israel. Okay. And they've been telling already. them the Bible's stupid and then trying to turn their kids gay. So it's inconvenient for you to just come wading in and uh, further alienating them from our greatest ally. In yeah, I think, yeah, because most of my following is like majorly pro Israel. And I think they don't like the fact that I'm put in a different perspective to them. Oh, yeah. so that's because I, I'd say it was shocking to me to hear that you got demonetized because I had always, in my head, you had always occupied a more of a right conservative. Uh, political lane, right? But we agreed on things like COVID and other things that I uh, that we agreed on. And uh, but I was surprised to see that you actually went against the the uh, the, uh, the establishment narrative on Israel. And so you have this big uh, MAGA following, and you have a right wing conservative following from other things. And so they don't want you to infect their brain with the truth about what's actually happening. And so if they lose them, they lose everybody. And so that. That's why they have to shut you down, right? That's how it feels to me. I can't say for certain because uh, I've actually, not, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I can be a little controversial. So I've been suspended a few times. But every time I'm suspended, they give me exact violation. They give me the tweet I violated and they give me a process to appeal. This time did not give me a tweet I violated or no process to appeal. They just said I've been demonetized. They said you can appeal. They didn't say how to appeal. They didn't say what to appeal. So I still haven't appealed. I'm just sitting here, uh, you know, creating some public opinion. I mean, thankfully, I'm not, you know, obviously, I don't like money get taken away, but I'm not relying on that money to live. So, but I think they're trying to make a point, a way to silence people like, oh, you're against us. We'll take your money away. We'll take people's, uh, I know people have lost their PayPal, Bebmo. I think, uh, oh, that's for a while. Uh, yeah. So it shows they want to, they want to silence our opposition. You don't want war, especially with Israel. It also shows the power of, you know, the APAC lobbying. Yeah, oh, the, the most that. definitely, and you know, and if this doesn't work, you know they're going to Russell brand you, right? So yeah. that that they, they'll yeah. they will go into your past and they'll find anybody you ever pinched on the yeah. ass. Andrew Cuomo pro, is just getting past that now. Girls. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, a pro athlete hooking up with girls in the past. Like, that'd be shocking. Yeah. Now, yeah. Jackson, how did you uh, find out that there was a meeting at Twitter about you and Jake? How did that? How did you get a hold of that information? Through Jake, actually, he. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah. Yeah. As the people in San Francisco who told me they, they weren't in the meeting, but it's someone I trust. So they, you know, it's secondhand knowledge. So I can't say a hundred percent how accurate it is, but it's someone I trust. They said they he called me cause he heard my name was mentioned. I don't think he even follows that closely, but he was just kind of shocked. My name was mentioned and he called, he said mine and Jackson It's possible as other names, but those are the two names they mentioned to me. Now, Jackson, what, so you, your, your Twitter account has just skyrocketed. So you're one of the leading voices talking about the Israeli Palestinian, uh, well, the genocide that's being taken, that's taking place right now in Gaza. And so they're coming at you to, have they demonetized you or they, what have they done to you exactly? As far as I know, my account has not been demonetized like Jake says yet. But they did place two ghost bans on my account this week, which I didn't even know what that meant. I had to look it up. But apparently that's a way for the Twitter back in team to limit the reach of one's account. And you can check that online for free, actually. So I went online. I was checking. And twice this week I got hit with the ghost ban. Twice it was overturned. But what seems to be very clear is at least for myself and Jake, they uh, – they're worried about the reach of our accounts. They they think it's so silly. They think, I guess, they can buy us off by demonetizing us a thousand dollars a week. I mean, that like who who's going to be who if you're witnessing and condemning and calling out a genocide, who's going to be stopped by withholding a few thousand bucks per month? It's insane. Unfortunately, right? yeah, most of the political class. I I think. I'm going to say <laughs> yeah, uh, probably, probably Kyle Kalinsky. It's pretty much my budget. <laughs> Kyle Kalinsky and Crystal Ball, yeah, that's probably, about it. probably. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. I'm just making a joke. But you've been so there. So have has anybody referred to you as being anti-Semitic by sharing the truth? <laughs> that thousands of people, if not hundreds of thousands. My whole my whole comment. I'm sure Jackson's too is calling me an anti-Semitic, calling me a Nazi, calling me a white supremacist, calling me a terror sympathizer. It's just uh, it's nonstop all day long. You think so those are real people? Because I don't. That uh, if they do polling, the 65 percent thing that was in that that clip. Uh -huh. Most people are not that passionate. That is full court press, bots, people that are hired to do that. Because if APAC is the main driver of this, because, right. and that's why there's people get afraid, like, oh, people don't support this. Not that many people support this. 
that mm. this is like the same nonsense they would do for like a a Disney where they crap up. I don't know Spider Man or something. They got to hire people to go. This was great. Oh, they gave okay. me all the feels. You know <laughs> yeah. how they do for Hollywood yeah. stuff. That's yeah. what this is. There's no yes, way indeed. that many people would really be coming at you. You get some people. Yeah. But the amount you're talking about, I, I mean, don't believe I that, get, those are all I mean, real. Ben, I Sh ben Shapiro yeah. so slides into my DMs once in a while. Ben Shapiro's got me. about 20 sock puppet accounts. <laughs> would you fight Ben Shapiro, Jake, in the octagon? Well, he, he looks pretty <laughs> tough. But no, it's kind of shows you support. Actually, you know, his count's way bigger than mine. But I've been like ratioing guys like. Ben Shapiro and all these guys. So it shows you the support is not on their side, despite uh, despite them yeah. pretending like they're yeah, that's, that's a it. scam. When something like really wrong, and by the way, a saying calling for a cease. Look, can I do this and not get you banned, Jimmy? I'm just calling for a ceasefire long enough to get the Israeli hostages out. Yeah. How about just that? How about and just... then go back to killing all of them? <laughs> is that anti-Semitic of me? Yeah. I'll bet you get banned for that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jackson, for instance, your shadow bands, the like, so if you did it, if you did hack hashtag Jackson Hinkle, uh, you could get. I, I saw you talk about this. You had like sixty five thousand tweets with the hashtag Jackson Hinkle in it, and it didn't show up on the trending. Right? Tell me about that. Yeah. So we did two on my account, two different hashtag campaigns this week. The first was hashtag No Oil for Israel because the Turkish government is still supplying. Azerbaijani oil to Israel, a great deal of it. And that went trending on Twitter within 19 minutes. It had 15,000 posts. And then when I got the ghost ban place on my account, I did another hashtag, hashtag Hinkle Censored, and it got 65,000 posts excluding retweets. So that's just bare tweets alone. And it didn't come up once on the trending page. So I think it's pretty clear that they're censoring my name from the, uh, from the trending page. And, um, and there's probably more to it than even that. I think they're, again, trying to figure out how to limit our reach and silence us even more. So being called anti-Semitic, um, now, there was a time when that term meant something. It is meaningless now, right? Just like when they called Bernie a sexist. And if, well, if you're going to say Trump's a sexist and Bernie's a sexist, then I guess everybody's a sexist because that term doesn't mean anything. Wait, Arabs and, are Semites. Arabs are Semites. Well, that's another great that's point. That's a crazy thing to act like anti-Semitic means you hate Palestinians, too, because they're Arabs. They're Semitic people. That's what the word means. Yes. How but, does nobody know that? That's weird. But e well, now the word only applies to Jews. It's actually kind of funny because now the word is apartheid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and here is a great video clip of this guy, Ed Krasenstein, who we all know is uh. a paid liar. And uh, he is calling you an anti-Semite on your friend Haas's show. And watch Haas try to ask him, why do you keep calling? What is your evidence that Jackson Hinkle is an anti-Semite, meaning an anti-Jewish yeah. well, person? Well, I know he's an Assad toady, but let's see if he's... <laughs> <laughs> so here, watch, this is kind of, this is pretty remarkable. Here we go. I said his post was anti-Semitic, yes. And what, what makes him anti-Semitic, just to be clear? I think, I think Jackson is an anti-Semite. I, I think it's quite obvious. Yeah. Nothing. To, um, um, I'm actually not. So this is what uh, this is what he had to say. I mean, they, they, they have nothing to say. Take a listen. Didn't you call Jackson anti-Semitic? I said his post was anti-Semitic. Yes. And what what makes him anti-Semitic? Just to be clear, I think I think Jackson is an anti-Semite. I I think it's quite obvious. Yeah, I yeah. Most on Jewish pe most Jewish people would consider him that. Just like when I say, but why? Just, just like when I say, if if a if a black person accuses me of being racist, I said hold, that hold on. Wh that but before you use an no, example, not, can you, you tell me, me finish. what? You ask me a question, you don't let well, me just finish. Well, just I'm asking because why. Can you just answer why? Why, what? why do you think he's anti-Semitic? Why is he anti-Semitic? Because the things he says is, are extremely anti-Jewish. <laughs> Hold on, you just rephrased the word anti-Semitism <laughs> and said it's anti- Okay, but why? You're, you can't just use a new word for the thing I'm asking you why you're accusing him of. Can you tell me why he's anti-Semitic? He As a Jewish person, I believe he is against Jews. Okay. Just says, okay. okay. What if I as say, as an era or as a Muslim person, I think you're Islamophobic? Would that would, would that be I a valid I'm argument? Not. I would say I'm absolutely not. Well, I, well, I would say you are because you are okay, because I that's mean, literally that's, the you're, tautological. You're welcome to add that opinion. Just to be clear, just to be clear, one last thing. So we've established that you accuse people of anti-Semitism uh, just because they're anti-Semitic, meaning there is no deeper reason for why this is. It's just because you say so, and that's the end of it. Just to be clear, I, Jackson I, is anti-Semitic. Somebody, 
Do you have like, do you I have a reason though? Like, can I like can I just speak for a minute? Like just like so Yeah, man, but you like have so to have a reason. Just, I think you should have a reason. Speak. So it goes on and uh, on and on. I have like, a follow up question. What is a woman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was hard to listen to. <laughs> so that's so that's it. He just says you're anti Semitic because I say he's anti Semitic. So he doesn't give you a reason why. He knows exactly the question Haas is asking him, and he doesn't want to answer that question you know because he can't point to anything you actually said or did or a tweet that you made that is actually anti Semitic. He actually did. It's not a good answer, but to the best of his ability, he did it. He goes, I would think most Jewish people yeah. would say that. So that's his reason. He imagines some yep. kind of vote in his head. Yes. By the, and he's like, the people, I'm with the good people that would say that. So if you're a Jew that wouldn't say that, then you're bad. You're also anti-Semitic. Right. There's a lot of Jews that are anti-Semitic too. Craig, you got anything you wanted to ask? No, I was just kind of curious what, what the plan of action is for Jackson now. Because I think he got demonetized too as well. It shut down on WhatsApp as well. I mean, you're running out of avenues now. So Maybe get it's your like, mind right. Yeah. So I mean, he, what are you what are you gonna do, man? Uh, what, if in fact, yeah, there it is. I'm sorry, jumping the gun, but like, do you have any plans? If Teasley, I mean, damn. <laughs> so Even you've been Teasley? so you've been banned from WhatsApp. Jackson's been banned from WhatsApp, YouTube, TikTok, Twitch, Venmo, PayPal, Represent, and Teasley. I never heard of those last two. Uh, so what is to, to Craig's question? What is your plan? The plan, I guess, is to can you continue telling the truth as much as we can without being said. I mean, it's obviously important to keep these platforms and continue the message going to the best of my ability. But like Jake, you know, they don't it, it, we've reached a point now in the level of censorship where they don't even tell you why they're censoring you. It's yeah. just because 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 you're so viral, because whatever with WhatsApp, for example, I was uh, somehow my number got leaked on a bunch of Israeli Zionist telegram channels, my phone number. So I woke up to like thousands of phone calls from Israel and from uh, Brooklyn. And then I went on WhatsApp and uh, they got my WhatsApp banned. So that's what happened. I don't, to answer your question, I don't know. I mean, hopefully, you know, X Twitter, they keep us instated. <laughs> Uh, that was the goal with Elon Musk. He paid $44 billion for it. It'd be a shame to throw that out, all out the window just because you're getting pressure from a certain, you know, foreign government's lobby. So, so Jake, is, it, were you one of the people uh, who had high hopes for Elon Musk? Were you a fan of Elon Musk? And now has it changed? Uh, I think he's done far better. You know, I think out of the old Twitter, I think I'd be banned. And, you know, he's demonetized me, but at least he's given me a voice. And there's all he promises is free speech. I think it's unfair and it's, it's annoying and frustrating, but that's, you know, at least he hasn't silenced me. I mean, at least, at least yet. So currently I can't be that mad. And it's probably something that Elon probably has no decision. It's probably a rogue employee or a couple of them that don't like what I'm saying. And they're trying to silence me. Well, yeah, we'll see if I they think that is because to pick him out a UFC fighter, I can already envision because I've gone through this in comedy. I can already envision the wing nut with blue hair that thinks they're the police of Rogan town or whatever the hell. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, and I know there's a lot of the chuds like this guy. So we should go after him. And half of the room never heard of him, but they go, okay, she doesn't feel safe. I I'm sure there's some, cause and by the way, the way you hand found out about it, that's how you have to do it. You have to know a guy that knows a guy that works there yes. mm -hmm. to tell you that's the future. You're going to have private eyes that do this, that call uh, Instagram or whoever to find out why you're shadow banned. Uh, I will say for, uh, what's his name, Elon, he fired that chick that we did the story on. Remember that? No, he got rid of her? Yes. Yeah. So I don't know how long it takes them to figure out what they're doing, but I've noticed a string of the stuff happens, then somebody gets fired. And so it sounds like uh, he's not like personally involved in, like he should maybe be more involved in this since his goal is free speech. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, maybe run, just run right up the flagpole to Rogan is what I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm either, they'll probably either... Uh, They'll probably either reinstate me or they'll or they'll span everyone. I don't really think it because it doesn't really make sense just to pull pull my monetization. I think it was probably a rogue employee that doesn't like me, thought you know didn't realize how much attention it was going to get, and now they're looking at it being like, oh crap, what am I going to do? So I don't know. I my, my best so guess right. is. I amazing. would I would tattle I would tattle on Twitter to Joe Rogan if I were you, and yeah. uh, that's right, maybe I'll text him. <laughs> that's yeah, that's I'm going to text him. Uh, okay, Craig. I uh, mean, Kurt's going to text him. Uh, I'd save the text for me. I don't try to text him for this other is for people. for all of us, Jimmy. I don't, I don't like to bother Joe too much. I know he's gotten so big. I don't like to leave randomly be like, hey, Joe, <laughs> can you get this right for me? Text your boy Elon. He just had Elon on. He just, I know. Elon talking about the 
woke mind virus. Oh, right. Okay. And so, okay. Hey, great. Elon, you don't like that. Me neither. Um, why is this, this, what, why is this happening? Does he know? I wonder if yeah. he really knows. That's my, I, I just want to know. I was just going to tag Joe. like, you talked to, do you think Elon even knows? Cause this sounds like a couple people with vendetta on one guy because they don't like his type, which is UFC fans. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that online. Well, I'm also from San Francisco, so a lot of yes, those and that's I yes, around there. and okay, that's oh, the other component. Oh, really? So it's if you're from yeah. like Portland, they'd feel like they own you in some way. San Francisco, any one of these places where you know the real the real fountain of crazy clown world is coming out of. That's where they drill for more clown clown world oil. Now, for years, that that used to be code for "I'm gay." I'm from San Francisco. I don't think that's the case anymore. <laughs> no. Is that is that Jay? That's conservative. There's there's <laughs> still a lot of gay people there, but it's mostly just crackheads now. I, I moved. I'm not there anymore. But yeah, it's mostly like crackheads and Antifa, and uh, that place is really falling apart. There's tech people and then homeless people. Yeah, yeah, tech people, homeless people. There's definitely still the gay area, but it's not as bad as like some of the. I think there's more in like Miami and New York and stuff now. You got two, you got New two York dirty. is pretty bad now. I can't believe. Imagine it. what we could imagine what we could have done with San Francisco and New York and all those places with mm -hmm. the hundred and some billion dollars we sent to Ukraine mm -hmm. that just went right into. We could blow it up and rebuild it and blow we, it up again and build it. That's right. That, <laughs> we'll exactly. Blow it up and build it again and build it again. We could take a dump on every street corner and then clean those dumps up and take three <laughs> more dumps. <laughs> <laughs> I got great plans. If you guys want to vote for me, <laughs> I would. I would vote for you. <laughs> I have to get the politics if things keep keep going the way they are. So I just and here's the kind of things that Jackson, you've been you tweeted this out. This is great. You go breaking. Israel has taken famous Palestinian teenage activist Ahed Tamini hostage in the West Bank. Wow. Hamas is not in the West Bank. Well, just if Hamas surrenders, she can go free. What's wrong with that, Jimmy? So what do you hate? So this is the kind of stuff that you're tweeting. It blows up their narrative and they can't have that kind of stuff. Correct, Jackson? Exactly, exactly. And the level of propaganda, war propaganda coming out from, as you as you uh, so eloquently put it, the war pigs right now is far worse than we saw from Ukraine. I mean, they're putting out AI stuff. They're putting out just uh, edited, faked audio clippings that purport to show Hamas talking about certain things. It, it, the, I mean, and it's all... As, still regurgitated on CNN, Pierce Morgan, Ben Shapiro, uh, Jordan Peterson. They're all saying it, like not even questioning it. It's really sad, but their audiences are turning on them and people are waking up. Jackson, remember last time I saw you in person, we, were, we went and saw Jordan Peterson. And um, since then, Jordan Peterson has now wearing suits of two different colors that he sewed <laughs> together himself it's the he's the he's the modern day joseph i like yeah he's, he's, he's got a technicolor dream, technicolor coat dream coat. That's, <laughs> that, that that's why he that's why he banned me why did, block, he, that's he, why jordan blocked me why? because you made fun of his because, suit because i went to that event and you know uh we got to talk about the the malthus the anti-growth anti-human agenda that the globalists and the world economic forum are pushing and he gave a speech about how everyone needs to have a father and how important the father figure is mm -hmm. in life and i tweeted at him i said jordan you gave this great speech about all this stuff we talked about this stuff you know backstage why is it now that you're championing the israeli genocide which is eradicating palestinian fathers and pushing this globalist uh, you know, policy of anti-growth, this Malthusian agenda. And he didn't, it was a respectful tweet, but he didn't respond. He just blocked me. I know why, because he got 60 million from the Daily Wire when he went over there. Mm. And that's why he's like, was visiting Jerusalem. Exactly. Suddenly. He got paid a hell of a lot of money to do it. And you bloody well support Israel. Yeah. So that was also, a, 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 you know, he talks a lot about Carl Jung yeah. um, and yes. the unconscious and how, and then he just totally turns his back on it and twists it inside out and warps it so he could somehow be on the wrong side. It's of coming this. out in his suit. Yeah, it is coming the, out. His in his bizarre split insides are now manifesting like a chick dyeing her hair blue. Jordan Peterson has a split color suit. Uh, you know, it's just it, it's it. Yeah, Jordan Peterson. I had hope for him. And uh, he speaks he speaks sense on a lot of things. And then just like with RFK Jr. Uh, or Tulsi, even uh, when it comes to this issue of Israel, Palestine, they just totally flip on their, all their principles yeah, and all their millions of dollars. You need it. 
That's how you, it, it's not even mind control. Here's the ultimate mind control. Here's $60 million. <laughs> like, so you think, you think RFK is doing that for, um, way more. How is he going to run for president to and get also not campaign contribution? I think it's, at first I thought he was, and he, let me ask my guest, well, what do, what do you think is the, the psychology behind RFK Jr.? Because he wants to be seen as the peace candidate. And of course, he's not anymore because now he's not only not only is he pro Israel in this conflict, and to censorship, the, to, yeah. he's also now come out for pro censorship around yeah. this issue, and he's now anti anti China, anti Iran, and anti Venezuela. He sounds like John Bolton. So yeah, it's, it's what, what, crazy how much he switched, and it uh, could be a couple things. It could be he needs that money from APAC because it's he's completely gone against his views. Or He's flown with um, Jeffrey Epstein. There you go. Was, uh, <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein's well-known intelligence agency. I knew Jake was going to say that. <laughs> Black yeah. operation yeah. from Assad, allegedly. <laughs> Well, I talk. Speaking of that, I got to remind people that I'm going to be at the Laugh Factory in Covina this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, speaking you, of Jeffrey Epstein, if you want to come see a powerful show, uh, Kurt, are you going to be available Sunday to come do so sometime? I'm going to be in uh, the Funny Bone and not the St. Louis one, but the Ch St. Charles. Oh, it's St. Charles, which I guess is also yeah, there. it's at St. Louis. They're all St. Louis. It's that location. I'm going to be there. Night You're not going to be there Sunday. I'll, I'll be flying home. Okay. Well, if you get home, come out to Covina, watch us go do the stand-up comedy show. It's fantastic. Uh, what's your What's your guess on RFK Jr., uh, Jackson? Well, I think uh, Jake made a great point with the fact that RFK Jr. admitted to flying on Jeffrey Epstein's Lolita Express. I think the only question that truly remains is how old was she? <laughs> no. Jim Henson just got a foot rub and he was on it. Oof. Jim Hansen just got a massage. Mm -hmm. Just like Bill Clinton. Like just like Bill Clinton. <laughs> yeah, they all just got massages. Oof. Uh, did, did he really fly on the Epstein? Come on. Yep, he, he admitted to it. It mm -hmm. was well public. You can look it up. He admitted but, to it himself. But was that's it, right when he switched his stance on uh, that's when he went hardcore. That came out and he went hardcore in Israel like the next day. That's no, uh, how recently did it come out? I didn't hear about it. Really? I thought. Uh, I, I just saw I don't, I, Maybe it's been out for a while, but I just saw it like last week or something. Maybe maybe more recently. But I heard the story I heard was that he he they were going to some charity event and JF RFK actually brought his kids with them on the plane. Yeah, on that's Epstein's what I thought. Plane, he which... takes Epstein's plane. I mean, I imagine he has some other contacts for flying around on the dude's plane. Obviously, uh, I don't know. Can I can I borrow your plane? Uh, yeah, I, I'll I'll just say that um, you know. All these guys, all they do is lie. They lie for war. And RFK Jr., as you just put it, doesn't sound any different than John Bolton. Mm -hmm. They lie for a war. And if they're willing to lie for a genocide that just slaughtered 10,000 people, I don't think it would be all that surprising that they would lie to cover their butts about flying alone. Potentially, who knows, on, on Jeffrey Epstein's plane. You know, it's like uh, uh, Bill Gates. He, he infamously lied about how many times he went on Jeffrey Epstein's plane well, he's bill dead clinton, now. It doesn't matter. <laughs> bill clinton same thing he lied about how many times so these guys are bona fide liars and i don't trust a word they say even though rfk jr has been good on some issues it, it's just you can't trust what they say yeah well, i mean epstein didn't uh, loan me his plane any of you guys he's loaned you your plane <laughs> <There's> <laughs> blackmail. i mean it's like the godfather the guy the senator goes <laughs> you people come here with your greasy hand the next thing you know He's got a dead hooker in his bed, yeah, yeah. and he's like, "The I love the Corleone family is the greatest family." <laughs> yeah. That they all sound like that. That's yeah. like Bernie. Oh, why is Bernie suddenly a biggest suck up in the world? Seems like some kind of blackmail to me every single time. Senator, you can have my answer now. My <laughs> offer to you is nothing, and I'd like I'd appreciate it if you put up the gambling. The, uh, <laughs> well, I just watched that movie yesterday. It's unbelievable. It shows you how things work. There is that is how things work. Yeah, and that's how they control people. So. So do you think RFK Jr. is being blackmailed and that's why he's so... He all of them. I think all of them are. What, listen, what did Jeffrey Epstein give his life for to get enough blackmail on every politician yes, right. to save the tiny Israel, you know? <laughs> And there's, you're spitting on his sacrifice by, by posting Jackson Hinkle things online. So not that not that we, uh, any of us here is a, 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 a Nostradamus. Let me ask my two guests, what, what is your prediction of how this is going to play out? Do you think the United States will eventually stop funding this genocide? And what, what do you think? 
I think they're going to keep funding it. I think they're pretty all in. There's been no, no one's calling ceasefire. No one's talking about cutting money. The first thing they did, the Congress, they rushed in and gave money to Israel. I mean, the Republican Congress, pretty much every Republican agrees yeah. they want strong borders. They didn't go and meet for strong borders. They went and did an emergency meeting for money for Israel. So it's clear where their loyalties lie. So uh, it's very unfortunate, but I don't think it's going to go good for um, for Gaza. I think they're going to keep getting pounded for months. I think thousands, tens of thousands more are going to die. I think the ultimate goal is to push them all out of there. And unfortunately, they'll probably get pushed. They'll either take part of their land or they'll take it all. And they'll get sent to either Egypt or America or Europe. I think it's a, it's a sad situation. And it's disgusting that we're sitting by as Americans allowing this. This is also going to create hate around the world for Americans. That yes. There's no reason that Christians and Muslims hate each other and they hate America, but they're, they're pushing it again. Well, why don't you, yeah, if I you care so much, let them stay at your house. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> I think, um, well, we said on this show that, you know, back at the start of the Ukraine war, that this that war was going to only go in one way, however Russia wanted it to go. And we were all proven right about that. But now when it comes to this, there's only two ways that it can end. Uh, it's not going to end with Hamas being eradicated, as Netanyahu puts it. It's either going to end with Hamas being able to properly defend whatever positions they have, the tunnels they have, and prevent a full out Israeli onslaught of all their military positions or which, by the way, they seem to be doing a pretty good job of as of right now. They've taken out mm -hmm. 61 Israeli tanks, hundreds of Israeli soldiers. Not that I would uh, applaud or, or ever condone violence on this show, but it just goes to show that uh, they're lying about the stats of this war. And if it doesn't end up like that, if Hamas does end up getting slaughtered in the in the heart of Gaza City, uh, I, I would be very surprised if Hezbollah didn't rush in with their 100,000 plus men and missiles and start a broader war that will bring about the end of, uh, you know, this Israeli military as we know it. I think those are the only two ways this ends. Uh, do you think Iran will be dragged into this? I think they will. Yeah, I think if uh, Hezbollah joins in, uh, it's possible. It's much more possible. I think that's what a lot of really naive and ignorant and dangerous people in the White House want. Uh, but I, I, you know, we'll see. Well, hasn't yeah. hasn't like people like uh, isn't it the is it the U.S. government's official position as the State Department said? I know Lindsey Graham has said. But uh, is it the, do you know, maybe, you know, or maybe you don't, that the official position is if if Iran or an Iran proxy kills an American soldier that we're sending now to the region, uh, that we're going to look at that as an act out from Iran. And then we're going to use that to attack Iran because they've been wanting to attack Iran since 9-11. Yeah, I know they say if Iran gets involved, that America will attack Iran. I don't know what the exact you know yeah. line we made for that, but we're definitely we pretty much every politician on all sides has stated that. I mean, it's pretty just, sad to see. Yeah. They just signed a resolution in the House that they can give the president any means necessary to do whatever they need to do against oh, Iran. God. Thomas Massey was one of the few to vote against it, but they said by any means necessary. So this is so this is so you know if you listen to Wesley Clark Jr., uh, General Wesley Clark Jr., his famous. Uh, when he was on with the, uh, the Democracy Now!, he said that after 9-11, he went to the Pentagon and the guys in intelligence show, to, told him that they have a plan to take out seven countries, right? It was uh, Syria, it was Libya, it was uh, Yemen, it's Sudan, uh, Iraq, Iran, and Lebanon. Syria, right? Like how yeah. Disney planned out Marvel Universe movies, and, <laughs> like phase one, two. <laughs> and the last two countries that they have to go into are Lebanon and Iran, yeah. and they could use this as a way. So, and it it's also very suspicious that it took, you know, they didn't have a response to Hamas for hours and hours. A bunch of guys in flip-flops, Adidas jerseys, and hang gliders were well, able to... They were pressing the West Bank. They were busy protecting the settlers in the West Bank. Yeah. yeah. And, and doing it, just what's in the picture. Yeah, I've been to Israel, too. Israel is tiny, and there's military everywhere. There's no way that would make sense for, what do they say, six, seven hours to military respond? That's yes. just... Uh, well, what if they're not no that good at it? But the border is one of the most secure borders in the world. That was left wide open. Egypt had given them intelligence, I believe, the week before that they were planning an attack. It seems... Uh, well, also Netanyahu was extremely unpopular at the time. There was a lot of civil uh, disrest mm -hmm. in Israel. Then we get a huge attack. Who benefits? Netanyahu and Israel trying to take the land. So to me, it seems like a setup. It seems it's it smells you think like Mr. A set Security it's, would do that. It smells like a setup <laughs> to me. Uh, yeah, Netanyahu was on his way out. Forty weeks straight of protests against his government, <coughs> and then all of a sudden he gets his own nine eleven, and so the country has to rally around him. That's what it looks like to me. Jackson, any last words before we say goodbye? 
Um, any last, I say you brought up the Iran point and, um, uh, I think if there was ever further justification for the, the psychopaths in the white house, to want war against Iran, as we all know, uh, Iran just joined BRICS, Russia and China are leading that up. Oh. And I believe, I believe in April of this year, I could be wrong about the stat, but in April of this year, Iran was like the fourth or fifth largest oil producing nation in the world. So, you know, they, they, they understand what they're doing. They understand where they're targeting and that the dollar is under threat and that uh, a lot of people are not happy with this unipolar system. And that's what they're trying to implode. Okay. All right. Jake Shields, Jackson, the hair Hinkle. Mm -hmm. Good luck uh, staying uncensored and monetized on Elon Musk's Twitter. Mm -hmm. And if I were you, I would immediately tattle to Joe Rogan. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, Jimmy, can we just make sure? Hey, Jake and uh, Jackson, you guys are not feeling depressed in any way, shape, or form, right? You're you guys not suicidal, right? You're not suicidal, right? Never kill myself. And I don't do drugs anymore. Can, wait, can I just pitch you this, Jackson? You tell me if my if my uh, prediction is wrong. For the very end of the Ukraine war, uh, it's going to end with Zelensky behind a desk, big pile of cocaine. The guys are all coming in. <laughs> comes out of the door. He says, say hello to my little friend. Then Sean Penn comes out and tells him a long story. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good ending. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good ending. Yeah. Well, I was a writer, dude. I, I won awards. Uh, well, now even, N- <laughs> even NBC is now admitting that the Ukraine war is unwinnable and that they better find a peace deal and an exit strategy. And exactly what we said, you're right, Jackson, what we've been saying since the day one of this war, this war is going to end exactly how Russia wants it. And Russia is going to have their direct access to the sea and they're going to have the Donbass. And that's exactly how this is ending. And what we had to do was spend a couple hundred billion dollars first and get a couple of hundred thousand Ukrainians smashed for that. All right. I really appreciate you both making time. Jake Shields, Jackson Hinkle. Hey, we're doing stand-up comedy in Covina, California, Burbank, California, the day after Thanksgiving, Oxnard, California, Venice, California, Palmdale, California, lots of places in the Southland. Uh, Omaha, Nebraska. We're going to be in Omaha. We're going to be in Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, Washington. Plus, we're going to be in Boston, the Wilbur Theater in Boston. See you there. (laughs) 